Hey everybody, Nick here, and today, well, it's been a long time coming, but I got some terrible gear to show you. Um, of course, that's why you're all here, we're, uh, we're, we're all working under that assumption, but of course, I want to start off by showing some actually really good gear, um, some of which actually was relevant today. Um, when I filmed my G10 video, I didn't yet have this guy on my, um, I didn't yet have this guy on my table. Let me just pull things up real quick. This right here is the, um, this is a Rainy Day Knives slip joint. That's right. It is a slip joint from Rainy Day Knives. I said the same thing twice there, but that was because I was getting my, uh, my, my screen set up all set up there. Um, but this is absolutely a beautiful little piece with this very, very nice little Damascus there. Very nice finishing, a little bit of G10 underneath this Fordite. And this material here is called Fordite. Um, it is basically what is left over on the floor of a car painting booth after they've painted a bunch of cars. You can see multiple little depositions of different colorations of hard car paint. Very, very cool little material. Um, and considering that this one was, um, the, the table price on this guy was, I want to say, 550 bucks. I mean, yeah, that's a fair amount of money, but for a custom slip joint with a grind this nice, I mean, seriously, look at the thinness of that tip. Oh, yeah. Um, it, this was a no-brainer for me. Uh, and so this was absolutely one of the knives that I picked up at G10 and is uh, now a part of my collection. Um, and so this is Rainy Day Knives. Again, you can check them out on Instagram, but very, very impressive. I've also got some other non-terrible gear that's sitting around there. Um, this is the Wee Knives Malice. Oh boy, is this the malice. Um, this thing is completely and totally ridiculous. The Ferrum Forge folks, um, uh, Elliot and, uh, oh, come on. How am I forgetting the uh, Chris and Elliot Williamson? There we go. Um, they are over at the uh, Ferrum Forge. That is like 15 minutes that way or so. Um, they are absolutely uh, great folks. And every time I've gone over there, I've handled this little guy. Because I'll stop over every so often. They do like knife person meetups and things like that. This is a very impressive piece. It's beefy. Oh, my God, is it beefy. It's overbuilt. It's thick. But it's kind of cool. And so I definitely made the effort to get one of these guys on the table. One other one that came out of left field is actually thanks to my buddy Chris. He said, Nick, you got to check out the Chaburkov Stritch. Stritch, not quite sure which one it is. Um, but anyways, this is a very, very cool knife. It's all titanium. It's M390. Deliciously freaking flicky action here. Um, very, very thin, very slim, very... Very nice overall. Um, I, I'm looking forward to carrying this guy and really spending some time with it because so far I've been pretty impressed by it. And then the other thing that I've got on my table is actually a big run of stuff from Artisan Cutlery. Um, I went to the um, show, uh, the, the, the USN that is, I went to their booth and I checked out a bunch of their stuff. And actually they've got some pretty cool looking stuff out there. Some of it is a little generic, certainly. Um, you know, for instance, you know, the, the, this feels a lot like a lot of knives. However, at the same time, a lot of it was very impressive. And so I definitely wanted to uh, check some of that stuff out. So um, I've got a couple of those guys coming up here soon, but those are the uh, kinds of things. Oh, and of course, on my wrist, you'll notice here, this is the Seiko Watches Arnie. This is the watch, uh, not the exact watch, obviously, but a re modern reissue of the watch that was worn in the Predator movies by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and so that's, uh, that's kind of cool, right? Um, is the audio ever so slightly staticky? You know what? That might actually be because of the fan. Uh, let me try readjusting the angle of the fan there, and hopefully that'll stop that issue right there. Yeah, people are telling me to get to the chopper. Um, well, actually, what people are telling me to do is get to the terrible. Um, and indeed, I'm planning to get to the terrible knives here. In fact, the first, um, uh, my cup runneth over with crap. Um, what I mean by that is that so many wonderful folks have sent me so many terrible pieces of gear. And um, that was a, uh, that, that's a beautiful thing. So, um, this first box was a relatively large box, and I know the, uh, the, the senders have been very excited. They are listed on their return address as Mark and the amazing, amazing Cassandra, I believe. Um, uh, they are uh, Instagram followers, longtime fans, and they sent out a, 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 a box of stuff. And it comes complete with a beautiful letter, complete with memes, um, talking about uh, some exciting knives from the Zombie Hunter Knife, ready for action with a wonderful action, tactical fidget wheel, looking forward to this, an ergonomic masterpiece, resembling Brian Griffin after dental surgery, slightly afraid of this one. We also have a uh, knife that, the, oh, good God, the knife is the epitome of all things a crime-fighting member of the Rodentia family needs. Oh, good Lord, I'm slightly scared there. And then the piece, the resistance. Oh, God, that's 
that's entertaining. Um, <laughs> boy, this ought to be excellent. So, um, booked up at a, a gun and knife show in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Mark, uh, Cassandra, thank you so very, very much for this little group. So let's go on ahead and figure out what's going on here inside this little box. We'll go ahead and grab the first one in the box here. And, um, let's put this, is this, no, that's cardboard. I, I will say it's not great cardboard, so, you know, they, they, it's in keeping with the theme, right? All right, here we go. Let's drop this guy down on the table here. We have four, yes, indeed, four uh, terrible knives. What do we have here? We have uno, dos, tres, cuatro. Okay, let's go on ahead and start with number one, shall we? All righty, let's see here. Oh, yes, indeedy. Oh, yes. This is a beautiful, beautiful knife. And in fact, I think I've seen a variant of this particular variety over at the, um, when I did my original full review of the entire Z Hunter lineup after some joker sent me the, <laughs> I forgot about this. Oh, man. But um, this may be a special, uh, this may be a custom. Um, uh, you know, it is, of course, a custom design by my good friend Usa. Um, but, uh, of course, this, um, as a weaker assist than usual, it still, does it lock up? Yeah, it locks up. Cool. Go figure, right? Um, anyways, this is a um, very, very... It's fascinating. I don't know what these tanks are. The, the semantics of these tanks here has never been explained to me properly. Um, are, are they are they zombie blood? This one appears to maybe be, but what's the blue? There is no blue anywhere else here. Is that the fuel tank on which this biohazard thing runs? I, I just don't know. Why does one side spin more for Some mysteries maybe humanity wasn't meant to grasp. But of course, there were many terrible things about this knife. To start with here, we have, well, actually, the ergonomics aren't as bad as you'd think. The tip there, okay. Uh, although the clip is sitting on top of that tank, which is pretty excellent right there. But, um, you know, the ergonomics actually aren't as bad as you might expect. Um, it's, uh, you know, you've got a little bit of that sort of curving uh, banana looking affair here, um, which is probably not good. You've got good lock bar access here. How am I saying nice things about this? Well, that's because I'm ignoring the obvious. Like, for instance, our good friend right here who is... Somebody designed that, and that frightens me. There are weird people out there in the world. Um, then we've got on the back here, we, we, this is a very nice feature. So this is a tip down only, uh, left side tip down only knife. And so what this means is that it's actually helpful because if you put your keys in the same pocket as this guy, what you're going to find is that your keys can be kept at many different levels. They can snag right here. They can snag a level lower right here. They can snag here, here. It's effectively a key height adjustment sort of thing. Anytime you reach into the pocket, it's going to just, um destroy everything that's going on. Um, and so that's, that's Stella. Um, it also serves as a saw for, um, well, nothing. Hold on, where's that cardboard? Let's see if this saws. Will it saw? Actually, it kind of does. That's slightly terrifying. Now, the question is whether it cuts better than the blade. Wait, is this blade sharp? What's wrong? Something ain't right here. Something ain't right here at all. Um, and by the way, I, I, um, I'm doing my best to keep up with the, uh, the, the comments there from the viewers over in the other, uh, over in the other window here. But if I miss your comment, please, I, I have my deepest apologies. I'm going to try and respond to all of them, top chats and all, uh, at least uh, all of the ones that jump out at me. But uh, if I miss your comment, there's nothing, uh, no, nothing personal there. So we start off here with the fidget spinner of death, complete with the tanks of green and blue. Maybe blue is the color you will be if you purchase this looking for a high-quality piece. Um, it's cuts. It's obviously a counterfeit. Yeah, that's for damn sure. Ah, uh, oh, man. This is, uh, so this is definitely an auspicious start. It got us rolling? Eh? Eh? Okay. Let's move on. The numero dos here. That's right, dos, meaning the Spanish for the number two. Uh, let's go on ahead and pop this guy open and see what we've got here. This is... The hell? Okay. So immediately here, there were a number of things that jump out at us. Um, this has a number of interesting curves. Um, 
To start with, the whole thing looks sort of like a cross between a batarang and a turd, which, you know, I'll, I'll give you. That's, that's an interesting approach. You've got your nice uh, communist star shining in the, the, the pivot there, which is cool. Um, you have this little area here, which is a partial cigar cutter. It's not to cut the cigar entirely. It's just to cut halfway through it. So you put the cigar in here then shink, and then the, the, then it's partially cut. And I guess if you rotated it, you might could be able to, you know, completely uh, cut it through. But that ain't a beautiful thing. Um, And by the way, nice. See, as you're closing this guy, it's just in place for your pinky finger here. But again, it won't cut it off completely. So it must be, that's a safety feature then. Okay, excellent. Um, Then let's pop open the blow, my God. Let's pop open the blade here, and we see this is a ballistic. This is a, a, a ballistic knife. Mind you, it's not a ballistic knife in the sense that it's not coming apart, although with this amount of blade play, it probably will be at some point. Um, this, this is this is an interesting design here. Not only is it recurved, but it's recurved in such a way that it's serrated. Therefore, sharpening this guy is more or less impossible for mere mortals. Um, <laughs> okay, a lot of people go in the... Um, yeah, that's an interesting route to go with. You have yourself a, um, a spider hole here. Is it? Yeah, I guess it's big enough. But the fun thing is using the spider hole here is kind of prevented because the flipper tab is up against your hand. So it's like, do I want to pinch myself with the flipper tab or do I want to use the spider hole? It's, um, yeah, that's not amazing. Um, it's, uh, yeah. Then we've got ourselves a, a fake, well, a real swedge up here, but a, a fake dagger point. This is probably the most complex grind I've found on a Z Hunter sort of approach. Although this one happens to be an M Tech. <laughs> oh man, they should have labeled it Deuce instead of Dose. Yeah, this one indeed is. Uh, or maybe it should have been the third knife in the series. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Is that. No. Is that a piece of the Teflon washer coming off of there? That's spectacular. That's real spectacular. And by the way, if you're hearing weird things in the background there, my neighbor is watching a movie very, very loudly, and I think it's coming in through the windows. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be a... Uh, that'll be fun, narrating the whole thing. There was a scream of terror. Maybe my neighbor saw this knife through the window. I'm pretty sure the jimping is sharper than the knife. Um, certainly in the back part it is here. Actually, here, where's my cardboard? Let's test. Kevin? Mm, yeah, it cuts, but not super effectively. Whereas, let's see the rest of the knife. Will it cut? Uh, not really. Kind of, maybe a little bit. But it, it's not super, super duper effective here. Can it be Spidey Flick? Uh, yeah, hey, I guess it can be. Excellent. See, you learn something new every day, right? Um, oh, man, this is absolutely a beautiful thing. Thank you, thank you very, very much for this, um, this little bit of joy there, Mark and Cassandra. Let's move on now, because we do have a number of crappy knives on the table here. Um, he, yeah, I agree. Neighbor watching TV is not the strange thing going on right here. Um, all right, so let's go on ahead and <laughs> pop open number three, number trace, that is. Oh, my God. So, I'm going to be honest with you there, Mark and Cassandra. I had assumed that when you said Batman knife, I figured it was going to be one of the Batman knives you see out and about, right? You know, I, do I have one of these handy? I probably do because I make poor life decisions. Um, uh, if I do, I ain't finding it. But either way, um, you know, I assumed it was going to be one of the ones that shaped like a Batman symbol, right? Um, but... No, as a matter of fact, Mark and Cassandra, you went further. Instead, they found not a knife that is Batman, but a knife that is Man-Bat. And considering I am currently, as we speak, wearing a Batman mask, um, I feel like it's very nice to have that contrast. You've got Batman over here, and you've got Man-Bat right here. So, not only am I going to say that, oh, look at this, he's on the backside too, so it's, it's a two-sided Man-Bat, which is pretty excellent. Bat Boy from the tabloids. Oh, my God. Bat Boy, that takes you back. Oh, okay. So I just deployed the knife, and it absolutely does not lock up when you uh, deploy it. 
which is actually pretty, pretty impressive. It's an assisted knife that manages not to lock up. That's pretty impressive. Oh, oh, I got it that time. That's excellent. Um, so let's go ahead and deploy the other blade here. That one locks up. Well, that's good. At least half of the knife is quality, right? Quality. Um, and now we end up seeing this beautiful blade shape here. Um, this is actually, I believe, the blade shape off of the uh, Stan, uh, well, not Stan Wilson, uh, the, 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 the Frank Fisher uh, Fury, uh, but done worse categorically in an every way, shape, or form. Um, so, yeah, this is, ah, good God. Okay, that was a really bad idea. Rotating that knife on the table just didn't go so swinging. Because, yeah, it tries to cut both the table and the phone I'm using to record this. So we're going to go on ahead and, for safety's sake, put the blade back into position here. But I like how the blades themselves are anatomically correct. Although, and you can see here, they've really gone the extra mile in that they've sculpted the thumb up higher here. They've sculpted this little part down here and then these two parts roughly align. So this is an anatomically correct Batman, or Man Bat, I'm sorry. Um, although he appears to maybe be a zombie and he's surrounded by some sort of... Um, I don't know, some kind of a fractal pattern? I feel like the, behind this dude is the Mandelbrot set somehow or another. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now, here's the question. Can I deploy both of these at once? Ah, not quite simultaneously, but it did do the trick and did both of them lock. Uh, blade play. No, oh, no, wait, blade play, not bad, though. Oh, yeah, blade play, bad. Let's grab a, uh, where's my cardboard at here? Will it cut? Kind of, in places. That's a start. And here we go. This blade is completely dull. So, um, maybe that's a safety feature. Uh, keeping one of the blades completely dull means that you only have to worry about half of the bat, right? Um, that's, that's absolutely a beautiful thing. Um, it is indeed a thick boy, uh, with a capital two C's and I. Um, it is, whoa, boy, is this guy ugly. Um, I feel, I don't know, I, I, I struggle a little bit because the, the problem with this, the, the, there were many problems with this knife. I'll, I'll give you that any day of the week. But the biggest problem I'm having with it is that I don't believe it to be airworthy. Um, you know, if you look at this bat, you'll see that the majority of his his wings have been eaten away by whatever acid is causing the Mandelbrot fraction in the, or, uh, fractal in the back there. And then in here, you've got these speed holes here. So I feel like maybe this bat could slow himself down if he fell, but I don't really get the strong sense that this guy is going to take off. Um, this is really uh, maybe very disturbing. Maybe this bat, actually, this man bat, is a, a, a horrible evolutionary accident. Maybe this is a, well, God knows, I hope this guy dies off. But nevertheless, maybe that's what's going on here, and it's never quite going to fly, which is kind of sad. Is this doubly Emerson waved? Yes, actually, this is. So you can pull this out of your pocket. Uh, it would come from this side, and Emerson wave it out. Am I going to try that right now? No, because I'll hurt myself. But you can catch the edge of your pocket there. Oh, boy. Um, will it fit in the pocket? That's a really, really good question. Um, oh, and I, I like how the pocket clip is right over the guy's face, so he's going to like be eating on your pocket all day long in a variety of ways. <sighs> yeah, sure, that's the only problem, says Aaron R. Yeah. Um, is M-Tech getting into genetic engineering? We can only hope not, but maybe... Just maybe. Just maybe. Um, who would carry this? Fidel Castro, uh, Flo, I'm sorry, Fidel Cash Flow says, I can't imagine a practical use for this thing. Like, who would carry this and why? You know, I've wondered that many times. I've wondered whether there are uh, some sort of species that, 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 that haunts gas stations late at night, sort of like the long room with mole people. But these are the people who, you know, sneak into gas stations at night and purchase all of these knives. I, I, you know, I, I, often people just uh, ascribe it to maybe 12-year-olds who don't know any better or, uh, you know, badasses who drink too many energy beverages. I don't know. Um, but I, I've often wondered whether there, is a, um, whether there is a species out there that does that. And this this knife actually sheds a compelling clue, because maybe, just maybe, it's a man bat. Maybe, just maybe, these two are related. This is the flightless man bat, and this is the flying man bat. By the way, being a flightless man bat, that would suck. 
Uh, anyways, I digress. So maybe this is a portrait of the species that sneaks in at late night at night on those cold, still summer evenings to the gas stations and purchases all of those knives. Gas station attendants, please let me know whether you've met the man bat before. Have you seen this face? If so, call Nick Chabaz. All righty. Um, then finally, we get into Quattro. And considering the, the, the trio that we've seen so far, Quattro is going to be, oh boy, I'm pretty sure Quattro is going to be Quattro-tastic. That doesn't even mean anything, but it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Um, I've seen cotton candy with a sharper edge. Yes, and oh, this is going to be good. What the hell? Okay, so we've gone from man bat right here to um, bat flat out. But this is like a green zombie bat. Because his, his fangs are, are green. One of his lower teeth is green. The other one is not, by the way. I just want to be clear about that. Only one of these lower teeth is green. The other one is still black. Um, so he, it's asymmetrical. That's okay. Biology loves asymmetry. Um, and, and of course, uh, that's a joke, of course. And bi bi oh, and the other side, though, is not green at all. Okay. He's over a castle. That's good. And then I don't actually quite understand what this is supposed to be down here. This is maybe an exercise in pareidolia, right? Of, of trying to find things in, in images where they, they aren't present, like finding the, man, the face on Mars. Um, so there were many things that I can see here. Could, perhaps this could be Iron Man looking in this direction. That's probably my best bet at the moment, is this is Iron Man who's angrily looking up at the castle and the gigantic green bat. Um, that seems reasonable, right? Um, it could also be... I believe these are energy drink logos, which actually had, that, that lends support to the other hypothesis there. Um, then the castle, note by the way that on this castle, these two turrets are floating in the air up above the castle. So that implies that the bat species here has access to advanced technology that humans do not, which is slightly frightening. Let's see if we can open this guy up and see what's going on here. Um, we have, is this not assisted? Oh my God, it's not assisted. We have ourselves, oh, Master. Master, of course, that even looks dull. Like, it's not common for me to look at a knife and say, wow, that's got to be dull. Because usually you can't really tell up uh, until you look closer. But no, this, is, this just looks dull, flat out. So now you've got this guy with this beautiful triple recurved blade. Which, if there's one thing that's not super useful in many situations, it's a recurve. But if there's one thing that's less super useful, it's three recurves in a row. That's pretty impressive there. It is, by the way, tip-up carry, which a lot of people are uh, freaking out about. That's definitely an improvement. Um, but then they've done this. Um, so we see that this guy on this side has the dull triple recurve blade. But there is another thumb stud, which allows us to deploy the second blade. Oh, okay, if you press hard enough, it does lock. That's good. So now we have a double-triple recurve blade, or a sextuple recurve blade, coupled with a fork at the very top there. So if you are out camping, for instance, and you'd like to give yourself an interesting variety of cancers all at once, you just plunge this into a hot dog, and then, you know, you can hold it over the fire, and then ideally just throw the whole thing into the fire and let this thing be burned back to the, 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 the fiery hells where it has come from. Um, that's pretty impressive right there. And so we have here a, uh, a second blade. Is this one actually sharper? Or is that the first blade? No, that, that, that's the second blade. And both of them are pretty dull. That's impressive right there. And by the way, look at the quality of this sharpening job. You've almost got a, a little corner right here at the tip on this guy, but on this one, not so much. I'm sorry. They're going to need to work on that a little bit. Ergonomically speaking, this is a festival of hot spots. Um, you know, it's like Burning Man, but with hot spots instead of um, people on various drugs. Um, it's a, a very, very impressive little piece, and especially if you keep one of them closed, because you only need one direction of not cutting, uh, then you have these areas right here sticking into your hand on the other side, which is a very, very impressive little piece. So what we have here is the, the fourth... Wait, is there ever a position in which these make sense anatomically as a bat? Like, if I hold them here... Like, okay, maybe it's like a bat directing traffic. Can you kind of see that, right? 
Like, you know, okay, you go on this side, now you go. Yeah, so if you had like a mutant bat who was trying to direct traffic, or maybe uh, one of the guys, one of the little bats with the uh, with the little uh, batons trying to guide a plane into its parking spot, maybe that's what we've got going on here. Maybe that's it. But either way, I'm really pretty impressed by it. At no point does it ever look like a bat actually flying. Like, even here, now it looks like... Um, well, the whole thing looks like a mistake, no matter how much you run it. Um, yeah, this is definitely a safe queen. Um, and so, uh, do we have a designer on this guy? Is this my friend Usa? It's Master Usa. Um, but maybe, maybe Usa has become a master. Maybe that's what's going on here. Because clearly, I, it can't say USA and be, say, made in China on the back of it. That would be deceptive and probably subject to, uh... Well, let's put it this way. The FTC might have interest in that particular question. Um, but no, I mean, so instead they're just saying Master Rusa it may be the designer, and then on the backside it's stainless steel made in China. There we go. Interesting, though. Um, yeah, so that's definitely a piece. My uh, good friends, Mark and the amazing Cassandra. Uh, I assume she's amazing. That's what was written on the package. I have no reason to believe otherwise. You have... Um, you have sent me a veritable bounty of crap. This has been truly and truly uh, magnificent because it's been a journey, really, because we've gone from this to the, 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 the bat turd, then to the man bat, and then to the bat with the iron man. So uh, we, we've got kind of a theme here of escalating batitude, I feel like, as we're going upwards. There's a graph here. There's a trend line uh, of increasing batness as, as things get worse. It just gets more and more bat. Ah, yeah, these are all pretty bad. But anyways, um, these are just pretty impressive little pieces. I am very, very grateful that you went to whatever terrible little gun and knife show uh, was selling these and that you took these off the street and put them in the hands of somebody who, well, actually, I'm not sure I can control the man bat. I'm going to be real here. This thing may well kill me in my sleep. But if the Z Hunter hasn't yet, then, you know, that's, uh, that's definitely, uh, th th that's a joy. One other thing I'd like to highlight real quick is, you know, I, I very often, as I'm, uh, as I'm looking at uh, pocket knives, I I'll talk about their weight as a relevant factor here. And that's not something I, I usually do with terrible knives, because usually it's hilarious. But this guy's 3.75 inches, which makes it even less legal than it otherwise would have been, coming in at 6.4 ounces. That's a beautiful thing. This guy is coming in. Let's see here. Measure this guy up. Yep, 3.75 inches. Because again, remember, lots of states have 3.5 inch laws coming in at 5.4. This one's a lightweight. The man bat. The man bat is not trivial in weight. It's 6.85 ounces. And the question then becomes, if you let's say you're a cop, right? Uh, do I have any members of law enforcement in, in the room here today? If you please let me know if you're in the room, if you are a member of law enforcement, because I have a very relevant question for you. Let's say that you are executing a lawful stop. You know, somebody does something not so toward. Maybe you are, uh, I don't know. And you decide, oh, hold on just a second. That knife looks illegal. Then the person proceeds to, to, to hand you this knife, closed, obviously. How do you go about measuring the blade length? Does it add up? Like, I'm curious here. Is he looking at this? I mean, to start with, you've, you've got to be running away, right? Like, somebody bust, bust this out of your pocket. There, there must be a big part of you that's just like, this isn't going to go well. Let's just cut bait here. Um, And so, you know, here we've got 3.33, maybe, plus 3.33. Um, oh, wait, is this one longer? I feel like this one's longer. Maybe it's just because of how I'm measuring it. Either way, um... Yeah, I think that blade is longer. No, maybe it's just... A, either way, look. Does this add up to like 6.66 6 .6 inches? Is this a 6-inch blade? Or is this just something where you would look at this as a police officer and go, you know what, you've got bigger problems than me right now. And just move on. I, I, I feel like, or maybe, you know, execute some sort of a lawful arrest for no doubt something that you've had trouble with. So this is absolutely... Uh, a quandary, I feel like, for all of us. And then, actually, one could ask a very similar question here. Ow, you son of a little bastard just got me. Am I cut? <laughs> 
my buddy Sikari says, not sure about a cop, but I'd charge per blade. Um, this is a person who I happen to know has a great deal of legal knowledge outside of the domain. And uh, that, that's a useful piece of information there. Uh, thank you very much there, Nathan. <laughs> So then, okay, on this front here, we have ourselves a beautiful 6.6-inch thing. Is this a dagger? Because this raises another question, right? Because a dagger is a, a knife that's sharpened on both sides. This is sharpened on both sides, but it's only sharpened on one side, right? Like, does it cease being a dagger when I do this? Because then it becomes only sharpened on this side? Like, I, I don't know that. Does this change legal status several times? These are the kinds of questions that I don't really feel like are being adequately answered by the um, by the legal teams of these relevant manufacturers. So I, I just don't know. But luckily, I'm not even going to uh, ever find out because, oh my God, I'm just going to find the closest volcano and cast these right in. Damn it, I was in Oregon recently and I didn't bring knives to cast into Mount St. Helens. What the heck? Guys, what the heck? Um, if I got, no, I didn't get caught. It just was a scratch. I uh, trust and believe, although I appreciate very much your concern, Aaron, um, I, I have become somewhat armored to the effects of these kinds of terrible things, although it is probably poison. It's a gravity bat in New York City. <laughs> Especially the flightless one. <laughs> All righty. Well, thank you very much, Mark and Cassandra, not only for the terrible knives, but for the absolutely... Um, well, the, the, the interesting legal discussion coming about it. Now, of course, I try on this channel very hard not to be too didactic, right? Uh, to, not to be too paternalistic. I know that different people have different lifestyles, right? And I do my best to give advice that is relatively universally applicable rather than just being relevant to one or two people and claiming that it is true for everybody. However... However, some pieces of advice, I think, are valid across the, 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 the domain. And um, if there's one thing that I think pretty much everybody agrees on, it's, it's that you should absolutely 100% brush your teeth. It's a good idea. And I know, kids, you're probably thinking to yourself, wait a second, is he a freaking dentist now? What's going on? But no, in fact, I, I have something very special for you that um, it, I think it's about time to, uh, to, to bring on the channel. This guy has been actually kicking around for a little while now. Um, this guy has been, since I lived back in Michigan, but I recently found him. He'd slipped behind a drawer, and then suddenly, this came back into my life. That's right, my friends, this is a tactical toothbrush. Tactical toothbrush. So, I know what you're thinking, but Nick, of course it's a tactical toothbrush. People who need toothbrushes need tactics too, right? Not all toothbrush users are strategic. And I, I, I agree with you completely. So I haven't opened this. Even after all of these years, I haven't, I haven't started to look, to, to look into the magic of a tactical toothbrush. So let's go on ahead and see what's inside here. My biggest and first question is, what the heck? Like, how big of a freaking toothbrush is this to need this much box? So that's going to be my first question. Okay, so here's the toothbrush component. Um, tactical toiletries, indeed. Then that's the toothbrush. And then here's the manual. I'm glad this came with a manual. I was just thinking to myself, okay, here we go. Rugged, durable, field-use toothbrush built to last and withstand the elements. Now, maybe I'm mistaken here, but um, what uh, what elements are we generally dealing with when brushing our teeth? Maybe I'm, I don't know, maybe a lot of you have outdoor sinks, but... Um, toothbrush head stores inside the handle. Built-in ventilation to keep your toothbrush dry when in the stored position. Storage pod for up to four toothpaste tablets not included. Guys, come on. It's a tactical toothbrush. What kind of tactics is that? Carbide tip glass breaker, ferroserum rod striker and magnesium scraper, a lanyard hole... <laughs> Sorry, dagger would have to be one blade sharpened on both sides, not two blades each sharpened on one side. Thank you very, very much. If you are sitting there with legal textbooks looking that up, you are a gem even beyond what I expected you to know. So then the, the, the next question becomes the legality of tactical toothbrushes, but we'll get there in a second. Has a secondary tool attachment where you must remove a screw, storage for other stowaway tool attachments, and a number of other tools including comb, tweezers, razor, flashlight, scissors, pliers, ferro rod, and so much more! It has the exclamation point. I needed to get louder at the end there. So, yeah, let's go on ahead and, 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 okay. So, 
maybe I'm mistaken here. Maybe I maybe I am in fact a brilliant man, but I can't really remember. I, I I will I haven't bought a little toothbrush in a while. I got one of the you know electric dealies, and so I just buy the refills. But last time I brought a toothbrush, there were many things I remember coming with the toothbrush, namely a toothbrush. But the one thing that didn't come with a toothbrush was a manual. I never really felt like a toothbrush was something that required a great deal of documentation. However, um, this is indeed not the case, because this tactical toothbrush comes with a user's guide that is a full 8.5 by 11 page, double-sided. This is, allow me to reiterate, a toothbrush with two double-sided 8.5 by 11 pages. By the way, this is revision 1.0, in case they have to update their toothbrush manual further on. Um, yeah. This handle tool combination is not intended to replace any similar full-size functional tools, so they're contrasting this with a functional tool, that's kind of cool, uh, and should be used with care and appropriate safety equipment to reduce the risk of injury of a toothbrush. If any injury results, cease using the tool and seek medical attention. If any injury results, cease using the tool. Is there really somebody who's sitting there injuring themselves with a tactical toothbrush and saying, I don't know what to do. I'll just keep using it. No, people, come on. And so you've got yourself here just a variety of things. You have a lanyard hole. Uh, attached onto you. You have a carbide glass breaking tool. Because I can't remember the last time I've had to rescue somebody while using a toothbrush. Maybe it's been a while. Maybe, well, actually, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe not. Um, we have ourselves here. What other functions am I missing out on on my tactical toothbrush here? We have a tool hopper um, that holds three stowaway tools for different use. So if I pull this out this way, the tool hopper deploys. Um, it's a piece of plastic, but I can, is that where I stow the toothbrush? Yeah, I guess so. So I got, hold on, let me take the toothbrush out of here. This is, uh, it's for when you need to break your bathroom mirror, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Carbide tip for tooth, Ew, that's a little, <laughs> no, thank you. Oh, hold on. So this is the procedure that you follow. There we go. Oh, perfect. So now when I put, my toothbrush in here, it'll brush against the bottom of this metal piece. That's good. All right, so now I've got my toothbrush in stowed position. That's good. Um, I've got, is it a ferro rod scraper? They include a ferro rod scraper right here, but not an actual ferro rod. That's kind of excellent, right? Because if you tactically toothbrush and you would bring your own ferro rod. So, okay, I'm in, I'm in the field, uh, in a field maybe. Maybe I like brushing my teeth outdoors, I don't know. But I, I realize that, oh my God, I had tactical cake like 20 minutes ago, and I, I, I have tactical sprinkles stuck in my teeth. So you need to brush your teeth. I, are, are we ready? Here, here, let me take out the, let me bust out the Seiko Ani here. This is a, uh, th th this one's on the wrist for review. Here we go. It's got a stopwatch. Are we ready? We are going to go on ahead and see how quickly we can tactically deploy our, 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 our toothbrush. Ready, set, go. Okay, we're going, we're going, we're going. Okay, Tact boom, pops up there. Okay, now how the hell do I get this thing in there? Okay, put that down there now. How do I get this in here? I have, do I slide it in? No, now that's hung up on that. Okay, now this part appears to be Oh, cool! This this part came off the the track. That's neat. Here, let's try popping it back up there. Okay, now we're, we're back. Oh, hold on! That's how you do it. So you have to slide that thing all the way off, and then you, from the other side, put it back in there. Okay, okay. Now on. Now we're cooking with gas. So here we go. And come on. Ah, there we go. And, uh, uh pause. Uh, no, I just turned on the alarm. Okay, that's not exactly what I was hoping for. 50, we'll call that one 55 seconds. So I have gone from taking uh, fire from enemy positions to brushing my teeth in 55 seconds flat. I feel like that was pretty tactical. That was, that was pretty impressive. Um, where do you get tactical toothpaste? Well, they said that there was room in the, in the handle for toothpaste 
tablets, I assume right here. So then I, I would just pop one of those in my mouth and then go to town. But yeah, so here we go. It's like a, a toothbrush bayonet. And now at this point, you have the ability to brush with it. And I, I do appreciate the fact you got nice long... Guys, this is, um, this is definitely a thing right here. Um, that's what you get for not reading the 11-page booklet. This is true. This is true. I wonder what provisos come from installing the toothbrush. Uh, oh, no. Hold on. Warning, this handle tool accommodation is not really intended to replace any similar full-size tools. They've put that in here twice. Like, seriously. This handle tool accommodation is not intended to replace any full-size tools. This handle tool accommodation is not intended to replace any full-size... Like, how... How... How scared are they? Like, are they really worried that somebody is going to go out there and replace this handle tool, or use this handle tool combination to replace any full-side tools? Maybe, I, like, I have to wonder what meeting with a lawyer brought all of this together. Because, yeah, that's impressive. But anyways, this is a... Come on. Ah, there we go. Oh, that's nice. That way you can just drop your toothbrush in the dirt. That makes it easy. Oh, mate, maybe this is the toothbrush head storage. So the tool hopper is a completely independent thing. Oh, fancy. Is that the case? I think so. There we go. Oh, baby. Now we're, now we're cooking it, gas. Yeah. So, um, this is excellent. High quality piece of tool right here. But of course, it's not intended to replace any similar full-size functional tools. Um, oh man. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Whoever has allowed this little bit of tacticity to come into my life. Oh, and then you break the mirror afterwards because you don't like the state of your teeth because you've been brushing with a tactical toothbrush, which is not meant to replace any full-size tools, and you move on. So, uh, yeah, we have now learned how to tactically brush your teeth. Remember, kids, always tactically brush your teeth. Next up, we've got a set of terrible pieces from my good buddy Trevor. Trevor has sent these guys... Now, here's the question. Is that from me or is that from him? Well, I may have screwed up slightly here in that I put a little bit of a paper label on there just to remind me exactly who sent this guy along, but that paper has appeared to uh, have come off, thus creating the very first micarta handled whatever the heck one of these guys is. It's a paper micarta. It's very expensive, you know. It's like Westinghouse, but less impressive. So what we're going to go on ahead and do here is, since I am hashtag not a brilliant, hashtag, hashtag not a brilliant man, I'm going to go ahead and use a little rubbing alcohol. I'm going to go ahead and try and clean this guy off of here. Remove some of this paper. Yeah, sorry about that, Trevor. But, uh, oh boy, I can, look, it's kind of like an, un, it's an unboxing here. This is a reveal. Because I, I can tell underneath here that this is just going to be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Little by little, we're, we're finding out the truth underneath here. Paper hashtag. Yeah, oh, hashtags. They're like hashtags, but for trolls. But not the kind of trolls that usually inhabit hashtags. All right. Almost there. This is not something I ever thought I'd be doing with my life. You know, I, I, I remember all of those wonderful times back when I was working on that PhD, thinking to myself, oh, what will the future hold for me? Will I be a research scientist? Could I be a professor? Could I, could I go on to work for, for the, 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 the found the next Google? Nah, I'm scraping stickers off of a terrible gas station knife. But I'm almost there. So, you know, that's, that's, what, that's what we got going on here. Remember, kids, stay in school. All right, we are almost there. Use the tactical toothbrush to clean the paper off. Of course. How could I? Of course I did. What am I thinking, people? Although, I don't know, I'm a little scared because that might be using it as a substitute for any full-size tool. I, 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 okay. Here, hold on, I'm tactically getting this ready here. All right, almost. Come on. Why is this not deploying properly? Come on. Ah, uh, oh, damn it. There we go. Now we just use a little bit of tactical toothpaste, also known as rubbing alcohol. Kids, don't use rubbing alcohol as toothpaste. See, this is working, this is working like a freaking charm here. Oh, yeah. Then on the other side here, just get in there. Oh, yeah, brush that good. Oh, that's nice. That's just nice. 
All right. So now we can take a look at whatever the... So, okay, we have done what we set out to do, but at what cost? What is, what is this? Looking carefully at this, it appears to be there's a snake involved. Absolutely 100%. There is a snake. Don't step on snake. 100%. Uh, there is an engine behind it. Uh, it's a big engine. It's got nice old big air in like intakes there. I don't know why this snake needs an engine. And the snake appears to be on fire. That's that's something. Maybe it's... Uh, the, 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 is this a, a logo or something here? Snake blower. It's a snake blower. That is what it is. It's a snake blower. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate that, Alpha Leader. That, that's ex excellent. Oh, my God. So I just accidentally deployed the blade. Um... <laughs> Thank you very much, Peter. Uh, there will not be any Michael Raymond knives featured today during Terrible Gear Live. Um, he is one of the best makers out there. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I can't afford <laughs> any of his work. But we have ourselves a switchblade-ish. But I'd like to highlight something wonderful for you all. Um, I'd like you to notice, generally speaking... One of the signs of a good knife, for instance, say a Michael Raymond, or in this case, this Chaburkov, is that the blade is uh, in the same alignment as the handle here. You can see there is a straight line between here and here. That's a sign of a good knife. And in fact, any knife that doesn't do that probably has an issue. That is not so much the case here. What we can see is we have knife, 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 blade. And the blade kind of goes off to the side there. It is the, the snake blower rib appears to have blown itself a little to the side. Maybe it's metaphorical. It's a blown snake, so the blade is blown like the wind is coming at it this direction. But, oh, man. Uh, thank you very much, Trevor. I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, man. This is just terrible. Terrible, terrible. Because is the the plastic is cracked i'd like to highlight this real quick the plastic is cracked right here so the snake blower rod itself is i feel like i should send this to the smithsonian so that they can preserve it they have art historians and archivists who are willing to to, 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 to work on these kinds of wonderfully cultural useful you can cut corners with it <laughs> oh that's excellent um yeah, how much would we have to pay you to carry it for a few days? Mm, let's see here. I'd say a solid five grand to do the trick. Uh, uh, the cash ahead, wire transfer. Ten grand, and I'll... Mm, oh, God, now I'm signing checks I don't want to keep. Ah, uh, yeah. 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 Let's go on ahead and move off of that. <laughs> I, I've got not burned myself before. Thank you. Um, oh, the tactical toothbrush was too powerful for the scales indeed. So this is absolutely a uh, beautiful example. And by the way, look at the lockup here. The lockup has gone past the blade and just kind of snuggles over to the side here. Can I move the blade past the lock bar? No, if I push the blade this direction, it moves the lock bar there. That's nice, at least. That's something. But um, yeah. This is excellent. You can't carry it. It's not Cali legal. You're right. You're right. That's true. That's true. Although, as uh, the series Breaking Bad told us, every man has a price, right? If I'm going to be violating the law, I might as well make good money for it. Eh, I'm boring. Anyways, Trevor, this was absolutely a wonderful thing. Um, the, 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 the snake... Or, uh, oh, God, what was it? The, 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 the blow snake? Snake blower? Yeah, snake blower. Blow snake has its own affair, right? Yeah, 120% lockup. If you put it next to another knife, that knife gets a later lockup. It's growing on me. Um, that's probably a bad sign. You should talk to a doctor about that. Um, yeah. Thank you, Trevor. Let's go on ahead and move on to the next one. Now that we have blown the snake, so just that came out really wrong. Let's go on ahead and move on. It's like jumping the shark, but blowing the snake. We have a Wild Turkey Handmade Collection. So anything that is named that isn't wild turkey a kind of whiskey or a rum or something like that. I feel like anything named after an alcoholic beverage is um is problematic. Um 
Yeah, Wild Turkey Handmade Tactical Outdoor Rescue. Now, mind you, it's tactical, it's outdoor, and it's rescue. It's not for tactical outdoor rescue. Then it wouldn't have the dashes. This is only bourbon, bourbon, I, I apologize. Isn't whiskey the same thing as bourbon? Uh, okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I Look, I don't... I don't know the Kentucky people are going to be after me or something. Anyways, I digress. Um, this is tactical, outdoor, and rescue. It's a whole different affair here. Um, and what we have here is, let's go ahead and drop this guy out. Here we go, here we go, here we go, and... Oh, yeah. There are many choices today in buying just about anything, and we are grateful for your business. We strive to have our merchandise shipped to you as quickly and promptly as possible. We would like your feedback on your purchase. Oh, it's forthcoming, rest assured. If at any time you have a problem with your purchase, which I kind of suspect I will, just based on what I'm seeing so far, um, please contact us. No thank you, and we will assist you immediately. I need more help than you can provide. We stand behind our products 100%. That's probably pretty dangerous. We look forward to hearing from you. I don't think you do. And doing more business in the near future. Oh, yes, I look forward to doing more business with you, too. This is a... Um, this is a really auspicious way to start this off. You know, at some level, it's a very kind thing. But yeah. Um, actually, before we go any further, Tommy D asks a very useful and interesting question. He says, I was curious to get your opinion why it's cheaper to make a spring assist than a flipper where the mechanism is so much more complicated. Tommy D, that's a really great question. What makes a great flipper knife a great flipper? Why would you do something like this with a spring assist rather than something with an actual flipper? Actually, is worth discussing because it's not something that we generally do here. The biggest answer is tolerances. In order for an unassisted flipper to work right, you have to have both a good detent, which holds the blade in there as you press against, and you have to have a smooth action, which allows the blade to sm slide out smoothly. So this requires, very often, things like bearings, things like tight tolerances. It requires everything to be nice and parallel, such that you can crank it down without play. It is not easy to make an unassisted flip a knife. It is much easier to basically, well, cheat. Um, if you use a knife, if you take a knife like this and you embed a little spring in there, that means that it will always deploy. That means that no matter how bad everything is up in the pivot, it's going to be very easy for that blade to come flying out because you're basically helping it out there. It's like, it's the difference between if you were making a gate, for instance, making a gate that you could just give one little push to and it would drift all the way closed, as opposed to making a gate that you have to push the whole way. It'd be a lot more cool if you find one that... So that's the difference here, and that's why so many of these knives are assisted. It's because it helps to cover up for a crappy action. There are assisted knives that could have good actions otherwise, coming from companies that do make decent things, but by and large, any time you find a knife that's assisted, that's generally speaking... Again, there are some exceptions, like, for instance, Kershaw or ZT make assisted knives that are very high in quality. Um, but very often, assisted knives, Benchmade too, for that matter, are not necessarily where I recommend recommend you, and especially on the budget end, if you see an assist, you should probably run. So, um, that's, uh, I'm very sorry, Trevor, for cracking your, uh, beautiful, beautiful knife there. But that's a really great question, and, uh, hopefully that was a, uh, that was a helpful, uh, the diversion. But anyways, let's go back to, um, providing a little bit of feedback on the purchase here. So, this is what we have here. All right. So, immediately, I'm struck by this wonderful... Okay. Sorry, I flipped it over and then had a small situation. So we have right here a beautifully rainbow made. And by the way, this is a wild turkey handmade. I know what you're thinking, Nick. Wild turkey, bright rainbow with mother of pearl scales. Um, I know, right? That's, that's perfectly on brand. But we have ourselves here a beautifully rainbow made with complete with the same pivot, by the way. One nice sign of the, the similar manufacturers is you see the same hardware, mate. So you can see same pivot here and here. Just one's colored black. Um, this guy has these beautiful mother of pearl handles on this. I kind of suspect that it might not be actual mother of pearl. I'll show you a little bit of a contrast, mostly because I'm going to flex right here. And it'll be a weird flex, but okay. Hopefully it's okay. This is actual mother of pearl right here, and this is um, not. This appears to be some variety of port acrylic. There is a very slight difference here. This is a Protec Sprint Ultimate Custom, and this is, well, this is featured on Terrible Knives Live. So, um, anyways, let's go on ahead and pop this guy open and see just how much wild turkey the manufacturers have been drinking lately. Um, go on ahead and, oh, yeah. So what we have here is actually 
Is that a nail lick? I guess so. But I guess you can pull this open, although you've got the whole... Okay, either way, it's a fuller. I'm reducing the weight in the blade, which is makes sense because you want the balance to be a little further back here. Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, this is actually a shape that is not so dissimilar from the Rad Knives cleaver. Um, Rad Knives is a well-known uh, knife maker. He tends to do really expensive stuff. Oh, 440C stainless steel, wild turkey, handmade collection. But uh, th th I believe it's based on that with his front hole here, right here. And of course, it is a front-based lanyard hole, which allows you to I don't know, probably injure yourself in some way or another. Let's be real here. But yeah, so we have ourselves, oh, and of course, thumb studs and the flipper tab, because why not, right? Does it not open with the thumb studs? No, okay, I just suck, that's all. So we've got ourselves a beautiful little acrylic handle here. I wonder if it's translucent. Let's go ahead and pop this guy apart. No, T6, of course it's T6. Why would it be anything other than T6? This is actually a more attractive material than... Oh, boy. I wasn't expecting that, but oh, am I glad we found it. So what we've stumbled upon here is the... Oh, that's about the laziest assist pocket I've ever seen. Anytime that... This is actually kind of cool because it gives us a, a window into the assist. They have put this uh, little bit of um, bar stock here just to make sure that, they, uh, that, that, that this spring doesn't come flying out. But what we can see here is that when we close the knife, this spring is going to move under tension. It's going to compress itself. You can see it compressing itself back and back and back. Now, this is turning to be educational. Absolutely freaking educational right here. Um, and so when you actually deploy the knife, you'll see that the spring will slowly uncompress itself and as it does so, it will push out the blade, providing a little bit of extra force. That's actually really cool. It shows us beautifully how an assist works. Um, you also see that they put a little grease in there just to make sure that this spring doesn't move around too much uh, and doesn't rattle around when the knife is open. Um, that's a, a useful thing. Hey, it doesn't rattle. That's weird. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, th th that's a thing. <laughs> you don't lie. You'd love to have, have some bar stock holding the spring on the rapid fire. Oh, God, you got to bring that up. Uh, so but what we have here is a beautifully translucent something or another. Here, where's my flashlight? Oh, yeah. Check that out. Nice. That's some high quality right there. Um, this spring config looks very prone to metal fatigue. That is one of the downsides to an assisted knife of any variety is that very often those springs can break and then the knife will fail to open reliably. So again, this is one of the reasons I tend to advocate that you buy a non-assisted knife. I mean, assists are fine and, you know, again, with a good maker, they can, they can be good, but it's always, I think, in, you're better served very often by buying a good manual deploy knife. Um, and they also become illegal in more places, etc. It's not a, it's not a great thing. So, uh, yeah, how's the centering? LOL. Uh, the centering is, I feel like the blade is actually canted within the, like the blade is not, like generally centering is about which, which area of the, like if the blade is over here or over here. Um, but in this case, I feel like the blade is actually a little twisted because the centering is better up here than it is down here. Maybe the grind is just so far off. Either way, I'm not super impressed with the centering here. Um, they've asked me for feedback. Let's see what kind of feedback. That's actually really sharp. Holy crap, it's sharp. Okay, that's my feedback. Holy crap, it's sharp. That's impressive, and it's actually a frame lock here rather than a line of lock. I gotta say, uh, relative to some of the terrible knives I've had on my collection, the Wild Turkey here is, uh, well, it's awful. Oh, make no mistake for that. This is not a knife that you should pick up ever, but it is um, 100% a little bit better than the worst of them, which is kind of like being the hardest gal at the leper colony. It's like, good for you, but mm, not saying so much. Um, but yeah, that's definitely a situation. Yeah, loving the differential and thickness between the scales. You know what? Me too. Although, again, this is a common issue with, oh, and Teflon washers, of course. Uh, this is a common issue with assisted knives because you need some place to put that spring in between there. So this is, um, yeah, this is definitely a thing. This is a knife. Oh, boy, is this ever a knife. So uh, th this guy is uh, not only the perfect demo knife, but um, just generally awful. 
And I, 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 I appreciate a tip up, carry too. Holy crap! Wild turkey, you, you're blowing me away here. That my, my general feedback is um. Yeah, let's go ahead and do a little bit of grading here. Uh, D plus. There you go. There's your feedback. It's a heck of a plus, though. I, maybe that's too generous. No, no, it, it tried. It really did try. So there we go. That's your feedback here. And uh, let's go on ahead and move on to the next little bit of craption in our uh, lives here. Next, we have this guy. Now, this is sealed. Sealed from the factory can see I've not been into this. In fact, I've not been into any of these. I've been very good about trying to keep these guys out of my uh, out of my life until it's absolutely time. Gonna go ahead and use the Kaiser Fire Ant to pop this guy open. And we'll go ahead and cut here and here. And then we'll go on ahead and cut right through the edges here. This is, of course, an MTech Extreme. You can see here they put soldiers on there. And USA, this is U.S.A. So I'm assuming this is USA's full name here. It's like Usa St. Alexander. Maybe that's his full name. Um, because clearly it's not USA. Uh, that's definitely a thing. Um, <laughs> you had have given an actual Steve. No, no, that, I'm sorry. D was too generous there. I, I am not going to grade you there. So um, here we go. Let's go on ahead and see what goes on. Here we go. Here we go. And bam. Oh, yes, indeedy. So we have ourselves an extreme knife right here. This is an M-Tech Extreme. So, first off, centering is not as bad as you'd expect. Yeah, almost on. We have ourselves some nice grooving here. It's a groovy knife. We've got some jimping. Oh, God, do we have jimping. Although I like the fact that the jimping on the line, it doesn't line up with the jimping on the scale. That's a, that's a nice touch, isn't it? Um, that's beautiful. We've got ourselves more jimping here. Let's go ahead and pop this blade out. I kind of suspect we're in for some beauty there. Um, oh, yes, indeed. We have... Wait, is this the same blade shape as this guy? No, not quite. We have two different variations on the same theme. Um, <laughs> it does look a little Brian Tye-ish, doesn't it? Um, he's a novel candidate for Rusa, that's for sure. Um, but we have ourselves actually not a bad action. Does it lock up? Is it locked? Yeah, it seems to be locked. That's go. Oh, God, look at this oil in here. That ain't on me, people. I over-lubricate, but that one ain't on me. So we've got it covered in some kind of a blade or uh, some kind of a lubrication, which I probably feel like I should put in a plastic bag after we're done here. We have a paragraph written on the blade here. Tactical model, MX-801, stainless steel, OSA premium design, precision crafted in China. There we go. Oh, so we've got ourselves just an absolutely beautiful set of uh, features on here. We've got ourselves a clip point. We've got ourselves a harpoon. Is that a harpoon? A swedge of some variety, compound grind. Each one of these lines actually has a bit of a burr on it. That's kind of excellent. Um, that takes skill. Um, is this sharp? This almost feels sharp. Nice big finger choil. That's something. I'm going to go on ahead and... Um, no, 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 of course, no harm intended here, Mark and Cassandra, but... Okay, there are parts of this blade that are sharp. Oh. It was close. And we have dulled it. Yeah. It was briefly sharp, but now it is stopped. Okay. Um, oh, boy, that's some... It's not lock stick. There must be a burr on the end of the lock bar. That's pretty excellent. The whole thing is just one choil. Yeah, indeed. This is this is the finger choil beginner's edition, and this is the expert edition finger choil. <laughs> Single-sided crisp blade. Yeah, that, that could work. Either way, it's a thing. It's a thing. Modified drop point. Yeah, this is heavily modified, all right. This is um, subject to considerable modification. Yeah, modified. That's kind of like saying after after a car has been totaled, it's a modified car. Like, yes, it has been substantially modified. Um, yeah. Got the uh, blade coating is chipped off right over here, or maybe that was a grinding error. I'm not quite sure. Hold on just a second, folks. Let me, uh, I'm dripping sweat from my Batman mask here. Which, again, is not one of those sentences I pictured myself ever saying during my lifetime. But, you know, here we are, and uh, so be it. So it goes. Alrighty. 
Um, it's like they like love knives, but hate the fact that knives cut things. Yes, indeed. It's, it's a wonderful thing. Um, looks like one could abuse this as a bottle opener when drunk. Probably. Although every part of this is just like, is that a front flipper? Ah, no. No, it's not. Choke up for detail work. Oh, yes, it is a special force. It is a special knife indeed. It is extreme. With a capital X. See, I underlined it. Well, through-lined it, I suppose. There we go. There we go. That's better. Hey, it got. Oh, not that part of the blade. All right, worth a try. So, um, absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece right here. Um, I gotta say, some of this body styling ain't bad. I, looking at this like, okay, if we were to take the blade out of the equation, like if I were to just do, if I were to just show you this, this could, in theory, I mean, it's a little over -gym. It's got some issues of its own, but this could, in theory, be a, an attractive blade. And then they do this, and it kind of loses me a little bit. But this kind of exists in that continuum, where if this were really well enough made, I could picture this being for sale as a custom someplace. There's this horseshoe-shaped thing of the custom knife and gas station knife world, where, like, at the very top of either side, it begins. it becomes difficult to tell which is going to be exactly which. So, you know what? It's, it's not so terrible. I think, that, 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 okay, it's terrible, don't do it, but it, it's not so terrible. Still tip up, only left side. Good God, this thing's a pain to unlock. And that's probably a safety feature to them. What the heck? Oh, no, that's just where they were, oh, yeah, yeah. Am I feeling okay? I, oh, did, oh, hold on, did I just break off the burr? I did. You hear that? That was me breaking off the burr on the lock bar. That clicked. Yeah, now it's easy to unlock. Hey, there we go. See, I'm a knife modder now. Beautiful. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So, um, that was a thing. Thank you very, very much for that little bit of, uh, shall we say joy? Yeah, we'll say joy. Next thing. Uh, this guy actually uh, came b blank. We're going to move into the watch territory briefly. Um, this guy came uh, out in the open, so to speak. Um, but I've made a very strong point not to look at it carefully. I just threw it in the corner where I keep all of the terrible things. And I put it right here. And um, what we have here is this right here. This is a two-tone watch. Um, the, the, the meaning that part of it is gold, part of it is not gold. Um, it is not a, a, a no, or it is not a knockoff because it doesn't have any names there. But we can tell that this guy here. Let me polish up the crystal real quick for you. Um, we can tell that this guy. Did, by the way, did you see that aim? Yeah, damn, I'm good. All right. Um, anyways, polish up the crystal here. Is there plastic on it? No. Okay, that's okay. We didn't need to protect the crystal. No, it's just dirty on the inside. Okay, that's cool. That's very cool. Um, so, yeah, what we have here is a beautiful Rolex, roughly Submariner knockoff. Um, it is a... Oh, come on. you got to be kidding me. It can't be that good. It cannot be that good. So we have ourselves a Tavise. Oh, my God, it's that good. So, ladies and gentlemen... There is a, a there is a constant joke out there, right? Of of people, uh, you know, changing one thing to make a knockoff, right? Um, and so one of the the jokes is that you know instead of a Sony television, it's a Sony, right? Um, and you know, very often though, that's not the way it actually works. That's too transparent. But sometimes, sometimes it is that way. Rolex um, is a watch company many of you may be aware of, and one of their claims to fame is that the rating of superlative chronometer. Superlative chronometer it means that it is a chronometer held to an even higher standard than the chronometer standard for accuracy. And so Rolex sells a superlative chronometer. This, however, is not exactly a superlative chronometer. This, my friends, this is a perlative chronometer. See? Perlative chronometer. Perlative is not a word. But this is a perlative chronometer. Ladies and gentlemen, I, this is the very first one of these ever in existence, ever. A perlative chronometer. I am just, um, I am amazed. I am, I am truly amazed. Please tell me it says that on here. Please tell me it's rated in some way. 
we have ourselves here a perlative chronometer. Um, that's that's pretty amazing. Um, it's a quartz watch, so it's probably actually fairly accurate. Um, just because it takes a lot of work to make an inaccurate quartz watch. Um, that's pretty excellent. Um, but this is just they can't get sued now with an SU. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Um, we have ourselves a very nice little bit of... Hold on, let me cut this loose. Okay, let's play a little game here, shall we? I'm going to try and cut this little tag loose using the knives that I've had on the table today. Let's see how many of them we get through. Holy crap, that one worked okay. Eh, not much of a game, but nevertheless, it was worth a shot, right? Um, oh, Mao, thank you so very, very much for that. I, I appreciate this greatly um, because, oh, it's perlative. This is a perlative example of wonderful watchmaking. Absolutely 100% perlative. Um, does it say churnometer? Oh my god, it doesn't even say... I... <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I have failed you. It doesn't actually say chronometer. It says seronometer. It is a seronometer. This is a serenometer. Can somebody please, for the love of all things holy, immediately go on to like dictionary.com or the Oxford English Dictionary and Google serenometer? I'm assuming what this measures is something to do with wax, right? I mean, Latin-wise, that should work. A serenometer, a serenometer in Spanish, yeah, it counts to zero seconds. <laughs> uh, but yes, please, please look up serenometer. I want to know what it's measuring with regards to whack, uh, wax. It is officially certified. That is indeed the case. Is that actually spelled right? A perlative serenometer. Oh my God, it's a perlative serenometer. Let's look at the back of this guy. It is water resistant, QT801. It is stainless steel, t -vise. Oh my God. It also riffed off the Tesla logo. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit Tesla-ish, right? A little bit musky, if you will. Um, there is an existing perlative serenometer thread on the watch forum. Oh, I'm sure it is. Um, Google search finds mostly people talking about this watch. Oh, God, and as they should be. People should talk about this. Can I dunk it in some water to test out the resistance? Um, I could. I, I would need supplies. I would... I like the fact that this is a, a one-way dive bezel, but you've got about a five-minute grace period here. Like, click, 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 click. And then, eh, we'll go back a little bit, right? So it's like a one-way plus and minus dive bezel. That's kind of excellent. The word I've entered isn't in the dictionary. Okay, good. I'm sort of glad. It's nice, though. You can always adjust it so it perfectly aligns. Hey, there we go. Um, yeah, this is great. This is just truly, truly excellent. Is there loom? Is this thing loomed? I sure hope not at some level. Are we loomed? This is loomish. Yeah, that looks like loom. That's something at least. We'll see whether it sticks around. Um, but yeah, the dive be um awkward seal says, I'm dumb. What's a dive bezel for? I'm not into watches. Awkward seal, do not get into watches. Do not. Do not no, 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 no. But the dive bezel is to keep track of things. That way you can't accidentally extend the time that you have underwater uh, as you are diving and die, you know, that kind of thing. Except by about three minutes if you are carrying a... Wait a second, is this thing about to come off? I feel like the uh, serenometer here bezel is about to come off. Come on, serenometer. Oh, no. He's sticking in there. He's just not feeling serenometrically uh yeah yeah a perlative serenometer oh my god yes you have outdone yourself my good friend Mao. this is amazing absolutely 100 percent amazing um so this is uh th this is most certainly perlative um among all of the terrible watches i've i've seen on the channel and it, it will no doubt find some approach or another uh that will be also perlative, probably for measuring wax of some variety. Um, nice. Just nice. Thank you very, very much. Do not buy this as a joke. Do not get into perlative chronometers. Uh, break it with a tactical toothbrush. 
No, I think that this has a greater future ahead of it than outright destruction. Does the bracelet actually adjust? That's a question. Looks like it might. Either way, we will we will find a, a perlative use for that right there. Oh, that is a uh, oh, that's a thing. All right, now, now, my friends, now we have something truly special. Um, I'm not actually. I deeply apologize. This might have come from um, my buddy Trevor. It could have come from somebody else. I I deeply apologize. This one just came to me randomly via Amazon. Um, I don't know exactly where this came, but it is from Dockside Blades the Fantasy Knife Collections, and uh, we will go on ahead and see what a Fantasy Knife looks like. Now, by the way, Fantasy Knife, Fantasy. Um, I, I, I am trying to figure out exactly what a Fantasy Knife would look like. I mean, at some level, maybe the Boca Mermaid could be some people's fantasy. I'm, I'm reminded of the fact that, uh, and I only know of one of this, but in, um, oh, what, where is it? Um, it's not Omaha. Maybe it was Omaha. There is a place in Nebraska um, someplace, there, there was a gas station, uh, called Fantasies. That's the name of the store attached to the gas station. This is not an adult emporium, by no means. This is just a gas station store. So maybe the Fantasy Knife Collection is bespoke for Fantasies. Um, I, I just don't know. I just don't know. Either way, um, it is a, a Fantasy Knife and from Dark Side Blade. So what do you say we uh, come to the Dark Side and see just what our fantasies could look like? Ready, set, here we go, here we go, and... Bam. Okay. So this is indeed somebody's fantasy. Actually, lots of people who have weird fantasies have the Punisher logo on things. That's That's fine. What do we have here? Is this... How illegal is this? Oh, God. I think this is a flipper dagger. I think this is a flipper dagger. Now, okay, here is the question, though. Anytime that you end up with a dagger-style flipper, the question becomes, which direction does it deploy? Because if you get that wrong, you have a problem. So I'm seeing right here that there is a, a backspacer here, which means that if my hand is over here, I should be safe. So let's go on ahead and punish this guy by pushing out. Oh, okay, this side isn't sharpened. That's good. But this is indeed fantastic, in the sense of it is a fantasy. Um, yeah, oh, the Punisher. Oh, the Punisher. Uh, I am, actually, no blade play, that's weird. How's the sharpness on it? It appears to not be. I need a long, big piece of paper. Oh, I'll just use the instruction manual for my toothbrush. There is no part of this blade that is sharp. Oh, hold on, that part tore for a second, but no. Um, yeah, it is a fantasy that this would be sharp. Um, I like the fact that the Punisher's logo faces away from you, um, which is always nice, because as you're looking down, you know, you want your enemy as your, 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 I don't know what you'd do with this, for them to know that you are the, is this thing... I'm pretty sure that the blade is actually back off to this side of the knife, like, if you sight down it, I think the blade is kind of looking off to that direction. So it's sort of favoring your strong side. Maybe that's a tactical thing right there. Ah, uh, this is... Yeah. You have yourself some wire stripping holes here, potentially. I like the fact that they didn't even bother to put the um, the fuller on both sides. Like, this side is fullerless, this side is fullerful. Which is kind of excellent. Oh, Yeah. That's a, uh, that's a thing, yeah, Persian style. <laughs> oh, yes, indeedy. Oh, yes, indeedy. This is somebody's fantasy. But it is luckily not my fantasy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. One of these days, I'm going to need you actually put an edge on one of these. That'll be terrible. That'll be just freaking terrible. So, um, yeah. This is fantastic. That's for damn sure. Only in the fantasy sense. God, that could be sharp, and this could be so illegal. So, oh, by the way, look at the centering, which is roughly no. That that is the degree of centering right there. Yeah. All right. So, that was beautiful. Now, mm, I have two choices here. I I, I have uh, actually two sets of knives. One of which are about two sets of gear. That is. 
one of which is from my good buddy Keith. Now, my buddy Keith they're over in the Michigan, he's a great guy. He's, you know, helps young review. He's a gem of a human being. And I know that he is absolutely a master of finding unapologetic crap. But the thing is, my cup runneth over at the moment. So, Keith, I love you. That the love is there in, you know, a platonic review would have you away. But nevertheless, the love is there. But I think I'm going to hold on to your stuff for the next episode because yours is going to be the perfect seed of craption from which everything else will come. And I will instead jump into the last three pieces of gear we're going to look at tonight from my good buddy Josh. Now, Josh is also no, no, no stranger to the channel. He's a longtime viewer and a longtime source of just awful, awful crap. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to seeing what's got, what we have here. We have three pieces. We have this thing right here, which I've tried not to look at. We have this thing right here. And then this one is marked open last. I'm just going to go on ahead and hope that that's not something that's going to injure me. Um, and it's not like a, that it's not an omen or something like that. Let's go on ahead and uh, let, let, let's go here first. This appears to be a watch. Do not, of course, get into watches. So let's go on ahead and pull this out. Oh, yes. Does this watch even work? So I'd like to highlight, first off, the beautiful fashionableness of this particular piece. Um, let's go ahead and pull this out and see if the watch turns on. If I pull out this spacer, let's see. Come on, spacer. There we go. Hey, it's sticking. It's working. Okay, okay, cool. Now, what we see here are three sub-dials and two pushes. Let's go ahead and press the pushes which are molded plastic. As a matter of fact, you can see that the plastic line goes right through those pushes. So those are fake. Uh, those are fake pushes. And in fact, the, the, the hands are just painted onto the dial. That's pretty excellent. This is a Z Hunter Daytona. <laughs> Indeed. Um, it is a hacking movement. That's good. As in, I will be hacking up a lung. Let's see here. Let's set the time accurately here. Oh my God, is this thing... Like, the question then becomes, where do you get this? I mean, I feel like the answer is probably Walmart, as is the answer to so many things in life. Hold on. I had it set, and then it jumped forward, because holy gear, backlash, Batman. There we go. Okay, beautiful. So now we have the correct time set. The band on this guy is very... Okay, that's probably not a good sign when you tug on it, and it just stretches and... Oh, what the heck. And there went my rubbing alcohol. That's okay. So, yeah, that's a quality band right there. Um, yeah, th th look, I figure this entire section should come with a California Proposition 65. This will give you cancer warning. Um, I'm, God, I'm loving how non-flexible this rubber is. That's pretty spectacular right there. Um, so... There we go. Um, this is not a chronometer. I'm sorry, a, a serenometer. Nor is it a perlative uh, serenometer. But um, we have ourselves a, a very flexible thing here. We have ourselves a nice mirror finished back, which is always a joy. Um, we have ourselves uh, an entirely plastic body. Um, oh, that was nice. Did you see? It's got quick release spring bars. You just twist the clasp and they release. Oh, no, that's... Uh, oh, no, that quick release. Nice. Um, What we see here is that the spring bar holes are actually just molded into the plastic. This entire watch, with the possible exception of this back piece here, is pure plastic. That's nice. Let's see what's underneath there. Let's pop this guy open. Okay. Okay. I think I would need a thin and a knife to get up in there. But you know what? That's the less entertaining approach. Instead, you know what? It's tactic time. Holy crap, that was actually glass. I was pretty sure that was going to be plastic. Well, that was a really bad idea, my friends. That was a very, very bad idea. Because right now I have a thin sheen of broken glass all over my, um, all over my review surface and the area surrounding it. So that's going to increase the difficulty of this uh, this whole process by a, a, a large margin. Um, wow. I <laughs> Thank you very much, Frank, for donating for that. All righty. Um, just one little bit of a second here, and then we will proceed with the process. And finding, oh, God, there is just glass everywhere. 
You know what, Josh? I think you've got the last laugh on this one. Yeah, that was definitely a GG sort of moment. I'm uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed by this. Uh, how do I how do I recover from this? Let's go on ahead. Just a second. Technical difficulty. Here we go. Let's go on ahead and uh, technical difficulties. There we go. Can't even write the E. So we'll go ahead and put that there. I'll be right with you, my friends. still live, by the way. I'm just an idiot. That's all. So now I get to explain to my wife why I have just run into the living room for the vacuum wearing a Batman mask while live on YouTube. You know, ladies and gentlemen, they talk a great deal about the, um, the trials and tribulations of marriage, right? This is not one that they generally cover in those kinds of classes. But, you know, I think it's a very real one. We're going to go on ahead and... Um, Oh, man, I'm an idiot. Just a raging, raging idiot. An idiot for all of time to look upon and despair. All righty. Just a second, please. All righty. This is a live vacuuming. Oh, yeah. Oh, there went a rubber band. Let's go on ahead and move this out of the way, shall we? Go ahead and suck up any fragments here. Oh, yeah. That's right. Sooner or later, someone's going to ask you what you did this afternoon, and you're going to have to say, I watched the guy in a Batman mask vacuum. All right. Let's go ahead and suck that up there. Hot damn, I'm good. You know, I'm not a brilliant man in many ways, but maybe this moment, above all of the other ones, has been pride in that understanding. Alrighty, so, back at the ranch. We're going to go on ahead and very gingerly, damn it, there's more glass. There's always more glass. Ah. What a freaking glass hole. We're going to go ahead and put that right over there now. Um, thank you very, very much, Josh, for this uh, wonderful, wonderful moment. That was a, a truly perlative example of live YouTube. Oh, man. God damn, I'm good. And I'm just looking here and I'm seeing more and more glass. All right, back at the ranch. Well, that sucked. <laughs> All righty. So... God. <laughs> Sorry, guys. You all really need a better channel to follow. Come on. What are you doing? Let's go on ahead and look at something else here. And this time I'm not going to use... Although, hey, we have proven that the glass breaker works. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a freaking idiot. This is exactly why Gotham needs me. I don't know what this is, but... I know that I want it. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves something truly beautiful here. We have ourselves a whole arrangement. Check this out. Big decibel whistle, audible in 500. So now here's the question. What does audible in 500 mean? I, does it mean that it's audible in 500 seconds? Like you blow the whistle and then 500 seconds later it, it goes? Um, does it mean that it's 500 decibels? In which case, I think that's actually literally impossible. Like, I don't know that any medium would allow 500 decibels worth of wave strength. So I don't think it's probably that. Maybe it's in Pascal. Yeah, it's 500 Pascal, which would actually also be quite loud. Um, yeah, no. Um, maybe there's some scaled unit there. No. Anyways, um, it's audible in 500. It has a sharp stainless steel blade. Fire a stick can make a fire. So what this means is that if you have a stick working for your company, this will help you fire it, which is always helpful. Seven core rope for 305 pounds. I really hope that he didn't pay 305 pounds for this. 
because that seems a little much, even if there are seven cores to it. Um, and high precision compass. And I like how they're using the iOS one compass app icon right there. That's pretty excellent right there. And then they show smaller pictures of it, right? Oh, that's good. That's real good. So, um, center bells. Sure. <laughs> oh, big decibels. So we have right here our sharp stainless steel blade. So that always leads to a question. Is the stainless steel steel blade sharp? Is only one way to find out. Kind of. It is not sharp. Um, I'm sorry it will not. Well, will it serrate? Like if I do this? Like if I go up and down, will it cut? Yeah, okay. It'll cut if I do this. So that's an interesting survival task, right? Okay, excellent. Um, now we have ourselves a... Oh, fire a stick can make fire. So this is a, a, a ferro rod or a ferro rod. And it looks like it's been used already. That's excellent. Yeah, that doesn't work. Okay, that's excellent. We have a compass. Is it accurate? Um, e no. Maybe a little bit. Oh, no. It's changing slightly. Yeah, the compass is accurate-ish. Ish. ish. Uh, hold on, people. This is about to be 500 decibels loud. Ready? Yeah, I'm not thinking that that's a... Um, that's not 500 dB. Which is good, actually, because it would actually probably destroy several city blocks. Um, we have ourselves our nice... Um, uh, a paracord here. The whole thing is... Oh, that's how you adjust the length. Is that you put it on your wrist and then you, you, you tighten it using this little affair right here. Audible within 500 inches. Yeah, that could be. And, and then you just tighten this down using your third hand. Uh, which is beautiful. Sounds like my grandfather with emphysema. <laughs> he spent too much time at the Cove at USN. All righty. Um, Doug says, I just came here. I have no idea what's happening, Doug. Uh, me neither. Me neither, Doug. Me neither. All righty. Almost there. Beautiful. All righty. We have our, ourselves nice and secured now. So now I am ready to survive. I'm ready to survive. Uh, now... Now we can get into this next part here, and this I've actually seen before. This is, um, although is this a ripoff of it, or is this the real deal? This is a, uh, a folding card knife, basically. So you can, the idea being that you can keep this card inside your wallet, and it is a knife. Uh, so that if I rotate this safety this way, then what I can do is I can fold this out this way, fold this here, and then fold this here, and then once it snaps together, you have yourself an actual pocket knife here. Um, at some level, the idea itself isn't terribly bad, right? Um, because it gets you a, it's a pocket knife that you can carry more readily. Um, and because it has this little safety thing, it's maybe very slightly safer. Um, they are, uh, yeah, it's an interesting little approach here. Oh, and it even has a little hole right there, so it, safety's in there. Uh, will it cut? Actually, it will. Um, that's probably in part because the blade stock is so thin that it makes it... This is actually maybe the best knife that we've had. Is that a piece of glass stuck in me? No, no, that's just fiber. All right, good. Not yet, at least. Um, yeah, these are, uh, these are interesting. You know, I can see this having a, um... I can see this having an application in some world or another. Um, hopefully not in my world, um, because, well, there were much better pieces out there. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, that's definitely... I'm pretty sure that's glass. Okay, whatever. Uh, sacrifice the body, right? Um. So yeah, that's. This is definitely probably the best knife we're going to see this afternoon, unless whatever is in the open last box is is truly magnificent. Oh, more and more glass everywhere. God, I'm such an idiot, people. Such an idiot. Um. <laughs> so let's go on ahead and actually we'll use this guy. Oh, there we go. We'll use our little uh, our little magical card knife here. To open our final piece from my buddy Josh. And here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go. 
I can't believe it was actually a crystal. I thought for sure that would be plastic. And, ladies and gentlemen, we have ourselves a Defender Extreme. And I like the fact that it doesn't actually say anything on the box except Defender Extreme. So it's Defender Extreme, Defender Extreme, Defender Extreme, Defender Extreme. Um, Defender Extreme, Californians, this will give you cancer. Defender Extreme. I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> oh, yes, Michael, the Hounded M390 is much better than this. Um, the Defender Extreme is certainly suitably extreme and will give you cancer. Warning might relate to the packing materials, not for the product itself. Wow. Excellent. Reproductive toxicity. Oh, yes, indeed. Be as reproductively toxic as you'd like. Ah, you're not going to get me. All righty. Uh, don't eat it. Yeah, I'll work on that. Oh, yes, indeedy. So, this has just gotten a little bit sweeter. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight is a wonderful night. Well, today, this afternoon, 3.30 p.m., because we've had many bats tonight. This has been really a night of bats. I've gone to bat with a mineral crystal. Um, I failed, by the way. We have our, our, our bat survival belt right here. We have the bat here. We have the Batman. Uh, well, I am the Batman, so there you go. We have the bat hoop right here. We have the man bat. What we've done here is we have escalated in our level of art. I don't want to say escalated, strictly speaking, because I don't want to f necessarily favor modern abstract art over uh, the, the classical representational sorts of art that this sort of come tradition comes from. One could argue that this is a, a photorealistic surrealism sort of an approach, much akin to that of Salvador Dali, whereas this is much more of a Picasso sort of approach to Batman, right? Where it's, it's clearly not Batman. They wouldn't have to pay the licensing fee, but it is clearly reminiscent of Batman with just these nice curves right here. I mean, maybe Maybe this is Joni Ive moonlighting here to be, to be Batman. And so what we have here is the bat in hyper-realisticness. And I would argue that this is not, in fact, unrealistic because there are actually bats out there. And if they were to bite into a highlighter, it would look very much like this. Um, and then we have our uh, hyper-realistic fake fantasy imagery. We have our complete abstraction. And here we have sort of a... Uh, an iconic, there's still an iconicity to this. Uh, it's not so abstracted away as to this, but it is nevertheless uh, uh, suitably abstract. And then we take this out here, and of course we have two wonderful full-length blades, these without recurves. So this is a rainbow Batman, Batman with a, a touch of pride, which is not a bad thing for a Batman to have, right? Um, and as well as sharpening choils. Um, this is 3CR13 steel. I like the fact that they've actually given us that information. It is simultaneously tip up and tip down, which is excellent. Um, we have right here, uh, let's see, what's the blade length here? We have uh, what appears to be a full, uh, this would be six and a half inches of blade length on this knife, which is excellent. Um, I can't say no to that. Um, we have full lockup on both. We have considerable blade play on only one side. That's good. Um, and we have, let's check the, uh, the, the, the sharpness here. You know, the one thing that this, I, I'm sorry, people. The, the, this, this was, oh, wait, no, damn it. I used this to replace a similar full-size functional tool, and I didn't use appropriate care and safety equipment to reduce the risk of injury. I did, in fact, cease using the tool, and I didn't need to seek medical attention, but see, I didn't pay attention to this, and then we saw what happened. Anyways, I digress. So, uh, we can go on ahead and... Okay, so there's a quarter of an inch or so of blade here that's very, very, uh, that's very, very sharp. That's good. This has a different quarter of the inch of blade. Oh, no, there was maybe a half inch up here. That's good. Um, do the flipper tabs peck in the pocket? This whole thing is a pocket pecker. I mean, the, the, the... Okay, hold on. When one of the blades is closed... Oh, no, you can close the other. You just have to jam the other blade out of the way. I just forgot how much blade play was, in, was going on here. Oh, what an idiot. I am, that is, not the maker. The maker is... Yeah, we're just not going to finish that sentence because that'll be a whole separate sentence. But anyways, what we have here is just a lesson in modern art. 
from going to complete abstraction at the top here for a uh, to a surrealism to a more abst ah this is just gorgeous it's like batman three ways it's like one of those very fancy restaurant meals that you that people i'm told go to where it's like oh what, what did you get oh i got duck three ways so it's duck that's like i don't know broiled putting a ravioli and lit on fire or whatever you do with duck i'm sorry ducks are cute I, I don't, they're, they're, they're friends, not food to me. But anyways, I digress. Gothic art. Ah, nice one, Joe Plummer. Oh, man. Um, this is, yeah, this is a thing. <laughs> Chuck it, Nick. You broke a watch. You're on a roll. No, I, I, I that's going to break more things. I'm, I'm good. I'm absolutely good. I got enough things I'm going to have to clean up after this. Oh, so much vacuuming is ahead of me. Oh, my God. And the Protec has just been sitting over here off to the side, like, judging me. Like, I, I sometimes feel like this knife feels very badly that it was adopted by me, of all people. Like, it knows it was tattooed. It, it, it knew that I was its destiny. But at some level, it must be so embarrassed, right? Like, that, that, that kid who requests that their parent drops them off, like, three weeks or uh, three blocks away from school so they can walk the rest of the way. Like, I feel like if I ever brought the Protec back to factory for service for some reason, it would want me to drop it off two blocks away just because it knows that it's also sharing a collection with these. I, 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 I don't know. Maybe I'm off there. But either way, um, yeah, this is, this is definitely a thing. Bat four ways. Bat four ways. Um, today, my friends, today was a very successful live stream. We have seen so many, many things. We have seen so many, 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 many things. We've seen uh, a tactical toothbrush attack a wristwatch and result in, well, complete and total idiocy. Wow, I'm so dumb. Just remarkably so. This is proof, kids, by the way, that you don't have to be smart to get a PhD. But anyways, we've seen a tactical toothbrush attack a watch and uh, cause problems. We have seen the Punisher. We have seen <laughs> the snake blower. <laughs> the fidget spinner of death, complete with tanks of whatever that is. We've seen one of the more attractive m -techs out there, probably based on somebody else's design. Uh, we have seen the Mother of Pearl with the assistant. We had an educational moment in the middle there. Actually, we've had several of them. Most of them would just don't be like Nick Shabazz. And we've seen the progression of art all the way from a realistic representation through surrealism, through abstraction, to complete and total modern art. This has truly been, I think, a, a wonderful stream. This has been a, a stream that... Oh, and of course, I cannot forget the perlative serenometer. My friends, this has been a truly perlative live stream. And I hope that you, are, uh, that you enjoyed it as much as I did. I hope that you uh, <laughs> had a wonderful time. And most of all, I hope that you have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now. Ah.